is that if your leukemia has relapsed at this point, the outlook is poor unless you have a stem cell transplant. Yeah, so we're heading to King's. I think we're gonna meet the BBC just before they're gonna film the meeting, like I said. And Majid and Francesca are gonna meet us there as well. Um, and what else? I don't know. I've got lots of questions to ask this Dr. Ruben Benjamin, um, namely, you know, the pros and cons of, um, of the different approaches, i.e. having them use donor cells. Because if, like, my cells are not working properly, maybe the donor option is better, um, or maybe there are more risks because they're not my cells. So just a bit of clarity, um, his perspective on everything would be, would be nice. And then um, seeing what, um, uh, what to do about going out to Philly and I need to kind of contact Bupa, my health insurer, and see um, what they can do to help with, there's another drug, another antigen, similar to this blenitumumab, um, and the good news is that my leukemia cells actually have both um, necessary proteins on their outside um, wall, so that's another option, but at the moment it's not covered on the NHS. So the question is, can Bupa help? Can you help Bupa? I will find out later. Um, for now, let's uh, enjoy the Subaru ride and let's spin to Kings. Hello, I'm here to see Dr. Ruben Benjamin. So yeah, so we just got here, just sitting in reception. Not much else to say for now. Um, the doctor and the team is going to come and get us in a second, and then we can ask them lots of questions and see. Francesca just got here, and we're still waiting for Majid and my brother, I think. And then the BBC, who texted me this morning saying they'd be here at 11, haven't so far made an appearance. It's 11.24, but I've texted them too. That's the lowdown. Rubbish. See you in the meeting. <laughs> and they're all your friends there? Yeah, so my, my girlfriend, my brother, um, the CEO of our business, okay. and um, our camera guy. <laughs> I think you'll notice that if your leukemia has relapsed at this point, the outlook is poor unless you have a stem cell transplant normally. So the standard treatment is to try and get you back into some sort of remission and then to do a stem cell transplant. In the last four years, aside from blend and tumor, what's become available is CAR T cells. I mean, it's got a lot of publicity because um, the results, some of the early results are very promising. We're still in a relatively early stage uh, in the whole development of the CAR T cell technology. Um, and those studies uh, showed some very promising results with about 90% response rates. There is a trial that we run here called the CALM trial which gives access to a CAR T cell. And is it typically um, sort of once you get through it, even if you have symptoms, that long term, once you're through it, you're through it? And you, yeah, so unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately we don't have long term data because you know, the first patients were only treated 2012 to 2014. That first month after the CAR T cell infusion is the critical period where we have to take you through the infections, we have to manage the cytokine release syndrome, and we have to deal with the neurotoxicity. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens after that um, is a little bit more unclear. It is still an open question as to whether once you've been through a CAR T cell treatment, whether that is sufficient in its own right, or whether you need to then go on to have an allergenic stem cell transplant, mm -hmm. which was previously the standard of care. Mm -hmm. So Richard thought it was a good idea, perhaps, to um, go and speak to the um, University of Pennsylvania, um, just to see what they have to say, to see if mm -hmm. um, there are any trials that they're running there that I may be eligible for. He was saying that most of it is obviously pediatric, but maybe some young adults. Um, 
can 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 be fitted in. There's a lot of expertise, you know, here within Kings as well as um, um, within the trial. Given the intensity of the treatment, you know, um, my view would be that you should generally be treated in the country right. where you, you know, where your family and close friends are. Sure. <laughs> no, I appreciate you explaining everything so thoroughly. Um, you can imagine there's a lot to take in, and yeah, uh, um, yeah I just kind of. I think speaking to Richard again, um, <coughs> and then seeing if it's worth taking a trip out there in those two weeks just to hear another yeah. opinion, maybe, um, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, I don't know, the, the conversations I've had with everyone, everyone, you know, seems um, seems to genuinely care yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, do great work, so yeah. um, I'll, um, I'll let it sit and see if I've got any more questions and then a decision needs to be made quite yeah. soon and like really, when, when there's a gun to your head, um, <laughs> you know, there's a, uh, what, what's the alternative, yep. so. Get in touch and you know. um, hopefully between all of us we can get the right treatment for you. I, I, I sure hope so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> great. Thank you. Right. Thank okay. you so much. Right. You take care. Thank you. How do you feel about it? And the slot. Yeah, like I just said, um, lots to take in. There needs to be a decision yeah, has to be made. And like in anything, like uh, with anything in life, there's an element of luck. If I make the right decision, I live. If I make the wrong decision, and my body doesn't happen to respond to the decision I've made to, or I get an infection, you know, then I don't. That's the that's the reality. So until then, uh, I'm gonna try to let it sink in and kind of let my instinct guide me a little bit. That's all I can do. Uh, but yeah, I. I I quite liked Dr. Reuben Benjamin and the way he explained everything. I think he, he did a good job leveling up my understanding. Let's go so, to the office now. Let's go to the office. How are you feeling? I'm still alright, had some good food, recharged a little bit, got myself some pens and a notebook because I need to write down my thoughts and uh, structure them and then write an email to my consultant because what I do, or what I usually do when I have lymphoblastic leukemia with lots of options <laughs> It's every, every week I uh, structure all the information and organize it. Take it from there. That's the only thing you can do when there's an overwhelming amount of information coming away, whether that's on a project or whether that's regarding your health. Um, you know, having everything up in your head without having written it down and structuring it in case. Okay, here are the different options, here are the different pros and cons, here are the questions, and here are the next steps. I'm going to get crafty. I haven't actually written with a pen in a while. Do you reckon I can still do it? No. <laughs> so yeah, that's the plan. Also excited to meet some of these new faces, i.e. Paul. So let's see. Let's go. Let's see what's up. Nobody else. Trying to kind of figure it out as we go along and see what works, what resonates. Not trying to ever kind of go, let's put stuff out there yeah. that we think people are gonna like, mm. and then changing everything, embellishing it so that yeah. you know we're speaking to um, an audience and changing ourselves for it. But yeah. rather, no, it's real. it's really, yeah, real, actually, real, you know, and real. some of it may not resonate. Some of it may be yeah. a bit too dark. <laughs> some of it may be a bit too upbeat. But yeah. I've got quite a diverse personality depending yeah. on kind of what I'm doing. What do you what do you think so far and do you have any kind of questions and oh, any comments on what, what you some comments yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite 
looking at you three, um, you're a creative guy. You, you eat the dog food. You've been the influencer. Um, you, know, you have the other side of the fence. You see the vision of the business. You see the business brains, the kind of uh, off the CEO, the office director, everything in one. So I see there's an interesting three founders in front of me here. Uh, a passion for engagement marketing and influence, and that's influence who is, thinks there's, there's more they can do for brands in a business world. Is it with that the fair? Just guess at how you were this was. You seem more passionate about communication mm -hmm. in the business than anyone. <laughs> You see creative, you see business oriented. Is that, is that it used to be that, you know, if you were a celebrity, you were someone like, you know what's happening with Will Smith, for example. Mm. He's got the humility to kind of, even though he's a global superstar and he's done every movie, you know, under the sun, he is vlogging and he's not, um, you know, he wasn't embarrassed that for a while he had, he didn't have that many subscribers. Yeah. Obviously, it's Will Smith and it all blew up very quickly. And, but on YouTube, he's actually vlogging. Yeah. And, uh, helping kind of A, B, C list celebrities build their own personal brands and space. doing everything for them in terms of, you know, managing mm. them in this new space. Yeah. I think there's an opportunity for us to go and do that. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I've seen big brands again do um, hit 20 or 30 filmmakers, um, making a modest amount of money. Um, and ask them to create, so do something, anything mm. they like that, that just involves, I don't know, a Kit Kat mm -hmm. and some amazing pieces of creative filmmaking done yeah. um, for very low cost. You think if you're commissioning an ad, you mm. keep and you're trying to do that for uh, a large creative agency, it's brilliant. Why not just give 20 filmmakers 10 grand a piece and see what they come up with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that is, yeah. that is influencer marketing best yeah. in class, but so many yeah. brands are so scared. Yeah. They're like, well, you've got an audience and we want to reach them, but you're going to have to kind of do it like this oh, yeah. and not the way that you want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, so this was good. More work to do we do. I really don't want to die now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at my desk. It's been a long time, um, but I'm here. I'm trying to basically figure out um, how I can make sense of everything that was said to me today um, in all these meetings. And I'm doing that by kind of writing down what I remember from each meeting. And I'm going to write an email to my consultant going, okay, here's what I understand. Here are the next steps that I think um, we need to take and then we need to decide if we're going out to um, Pennsylvania to meet with um, the the experts there a to see if there's a trial or B just to get a second opinion um, but yeah, look the place is buzzing um, it's good to be back in here for a little bit and uh, distract myself doing a little bit of work related stuff so not just you know getting too caught up in into the details of this it's doing me some good stop moving that okay i'll stop moving it because the crack on yesterday very true anything else you want me to say the sequence is until tomorrow well let's cut to um tomorrow morning when um you'll come and meet me in clapham right and we'll go to the gym to see richard and do some uh and do some oxygenating of the body. Perfect. See you then. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Um, so this is exciting. I'm in the office actually doing some actual work. Um, so we're going to film a little POV response video to this uh, Casey Neistat, Neistat, Neistat um, interviewing the head of business at YouTube video. Um, and I'm just having a look through the comments to see what people had to say about it. Um, and I think it's important for us as a business to comment on these types of things and um, see why they're important and give our two cents. I'm not going to cl uh, claim that I have all the solutions, um, but I, I think maybe um, we can share a perspective as a business and that sort of stuff interests us anyways. So um, Rome's just setting up the camera and then um, you can check out what uh, we had to say in the video um, a little later on and when I'm done um, we will head to the gym and then head to the hospital because um, this fucking pump is finally being taken off me um, today so I'll be pumpless for um, at least two weeks and then we've got to catch up with uh, Dr. Dylan, my consultant, to see um, what the next steps are, if we're going to fill in or not. Um, so yeah, lots to do, limited time. Um, let's shoot the video. 
news on the channel, at least indicates that they're willing to you know, have these types of conversations. I think historically, um, YouTube has been in a sort of position of, we're not quite sure what to do here. Um, let's just sit back and see what happens and hopefully things will, will, will work out on its own because if you try to influence things too much or take sides, then um, the whole thing can kind of sort of fall apart. Right here is perfect. Here we are. And here we are. Am I mic'd up? Yeah, of course you are. Sick. Yeah, I'm coming off the steroids, um, so I'm getting like a little bit of tingling here and there. Um, but I think it's just joint pain. But every time it tingles, I'm just like, fuck, is this shit coming back? Time's it. Yo. Shit, but there's options, there's avenues. You shouldn't ever give up hope. You should always just keep walking forward. As long as there's options, he's gonna be okay. I mean, you give up hope, and what the fuck's the point in living? He's in there now. Yeah, man. Beating everyone sitting at home watching this, so if, it, if you can take anything away from this, is get off your ass, get to the fucking gym. Workout done. What's the point about John? Um, just gonna get some food, hop in the Uber, get the pump detached, speak to Richie. Different Richie. Not this Richie. Richie is my lucky name. You wanna show him that? No, because that makes me feel special. Don't, no, 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 I'm the fucking Richard. <laughs> anyway, it's got Richard the Lionheart, it's rooting for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's been to uh, the cancer centre. And here we are. What's about to happen? Um, Richard is about to come and we're going to talk about everything and they're going to take this magnificent pump off which uh, has run out. So I really agree that what we need to do is to choose the one that's going to, we're going to be able to get you into the quickest. Okay. So I spoke to Ruben this morning um, and his one, he says it's probably going to be three weeks okay. but there's a chance it could be next week. So the next point about the linear tumor map not working, so does that mean there's something wrong with your cells? No, actually, because um, it, there's lots of cases where the linear tumor map didn't work and the CAR T cells work. So I don't think that needs to be a factor in the decision. So then the next question was, would UCH perform the transplant or King's? It would be up to you. It would probably be better to have it done at UCH. Um, and have them manage the whole process. It's quite nice in there. I don't know if you saw it, the rooms are nice. You've got your sofa for a guest bed and um, everything. I mean, they, 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 have they, have diff yeah, they have different um, different facilities, right? And for me, it's not it's about very com similar. It's not about comfort, it's about... It's very, it's very similar in terms of what you get. Yeah, I, I wasn't... I don't think I was, like, at the limit, limit, limit. No. I think I could have taken even more. <laughs> 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 All right, I'll see you on right. Friday. All right. And you're contact me Do you know who, so, um, I do, yeah. Um, for the bone rush, should you speak to Katie to book that in? I'll book it, I'll book it in. Okay. Um, I think next week, so yeah. Okay, I'll tell you tomorrow then. I'll tell you what. Uh, so I'll add the, I'll speak to Booper and then send you an email then, you know. Thank you. All right. All right, thank, thank you so much, see Richard. You. See you later. See you soon. How do you feel about it all? Um, I feel good. I um, think that there are many options and I think um, we just got to keep doing what we have been doing, taking it one step at a time. Um, but yeah, 
I think it's not all doom and gloom. I think you shouldn't look too far into the future. You should kind of focus on what um, can be done in the in the uh, ne- here and now. In the here and now, in the next kind of few steps. So we need to actually go to the pharmacy. I need to get some antibiotics because of this, um, and then heading home. And then, do you have anything to say? I think. Um, once you have the confirmation, when you start, you should like go away for a couple of days somewhere. That sounds good. Like just fly. Just Europe get a break. Or the Alps or whatever. Yeah. You know, before we go Close no worry. Sorry? Because after it'll be a, a long yeah, time away. Yeah, like, after I'm not going to see you for two months, right? Yeah. So two months you'll be in a bed. And I'll and be in a bed and... You'll be in... And hopefully not, but you know, it like, can be intensive care and all that bullshit, so... Yeah, so... Okay. Well, tomorrow I need to go to UCLA, uh, no, uh, King's sign those papers, and then we need to wait for the slot. And, and yeah, and but we need as to soon ask, as like, when they will know about the slot, and when is the slot for, because if the slot is, like, next Friday, and you will know on Wednesday, you know, we can go away, like, for example, Saturday and Sunday. So. Sounds good. I like that. I like Majid's inefic- initiative sometimes, like, one last YOLO weekend together. <laughs> As if none of this is happening. Sick. Sign me up. All right, um, Isaac. I want you to nail this B-roll and make it the most beautiful, epic, emotionally gripping B-roll that anyone has ever shot. On that note, I'll see you next time. <laughs> with me.